this is a uh, short video on the laser 3D machining module um, released in Augie. Um, as most of you know, I started Augie originally to uh, drive my laser and to be able to experiment with 3D machining and see if I can come up with some interesting algorithms for it. I've reached that stage and uh, as I sometimes do, I'm going to be taking the summer off to do more research and to add a few modules into both uh, Augie and Gearotic and more releases will be out in the fall. So let's take a look at 3D machining and then I'll show you some hooks on some other things that have been added. Um, in the last video we talked about uh, augmented images and how we could generate a raster file to shoot an image. And I'll show you a... Uh, here's an augmented image of uh, the Pope, or a Pope I suppose. The green lines on either side of it are the rasters. I rastered this in X and this image is only an inch by an inch. However, if you were to shoot it as a typical uh, laser image engraving, uh, it would vary power throughout the grayscale and give you a uh, 3D image of a person. However, for those of us with weaker lasers, uh, I'm using a 10 watt laser and I'd like him to be several millimeters deep. Uh, that's hard to do without burning your wood all to pieces. So what I did is I added a tab to our um, free axis tab up here. You can see we now have free axis polar to go and then there's a tab called laser 3D. And if you load uh, a normal augmented image and turn on laser 3D, uh, you can then set some parameters. Uh, and I thought I'd better explain what these parameters are in case you wish to play with it. Uh, first of all, it's how many passes you're going to do this uh, particular image in. Now sometimes it's hard for you to tell exactly how many passes it's going to take. Um, so what you do to start a uh, machining run is you'll type one in current pot, current pass to let it know that you're on its uh, on the first pass of what you're going to do. Uh, pick what you think will be the number of passes that you wish to uh, do. Let's type eight as an example here. And then down here we have per pass and this is where you guess or perhaps enter what you already know uh, and that is how much material will be removed uh, if a laser was to scan at full power across that material at whatever feed rate you're going to use. Now in this example I'm using 12,000 millimeters per minute uh, to engrave this object. I already know from my material that if I run at full speed at 12,000 millimeters a minute I will leave a dimple in the wood of about uh, 0.2 millimeters deep and it won't burn the wood. So that's all I really need to know. Um, so up here I'm going to type 0.2 millimeters as my per pass. This is because I have already tested the material and know it's 0.2. You could guess at that uh, and then update things later. The system automatically then tells you that it's going to end up being 1.6 deep, uh, 1.6 millimeters deep. Now if you wish it deeper, uh, you can simply increase the number of passes. Here we'd get 2.4 millimeters deep. And as you can see, it's going to take a while. It's going to take 12 passes. Of course, this being an inch by an inch wouldn't take long to uh, do the first pass. Now here on current depth, you want to start with a current depth of zero. Because what will happen, as long as this 3D on light is on, when you uh, run the run this file, you can see it begins to scan and it's shooting the laser at the appropriate time, but what it's doing is subdividing the grayscale into 12 separate grayscales. So it will not repeatedly shoot over something which fell into a grayscale which has already been shot. In other words, it'll divide it into a topological file and cut deeper on every pass without touching the things that it's already sensed it's down to a level of. Now when it finishes rastering that scan, it will return to zero and raise your z-table uh, by the amount in the per pass. This is to move the focus point deeper into the wood um, and to re keep repeating the sequence. Now if you know that you can take 0.2 millimeters off without burning, then this method will take you as deep as you like without burning with the single exception that if you get close to a cliff, um, the off-focal um, radiation could burn the tips of things that are close by. Uh, because of that, you'll always have a definite limit of how deep you can go based on the power of your laser and uh, the focal distance of your lens. Um, these types of engravings, I'm running at 100%, um, but again, it's only a 10-watt laser. If you have a 40-watt laser, uh, you'd probably only want to run them at 30 or 40 percent power at best um, in order not to burn. But in the end, uh, simply enter a speed and a power 
uh, the greatest speed that you can do uh, with the lowest power you can use that won't burn it and still give you a significant depth. Entering that depth in the per pass and then you can calculate how deep you're going to go. So when this image finishes, uh, it will return to zero, the Z table will raise and all you need to do is press run again. Now this will probably not stay this way over time. This is something I quickly drew up, added as a panel uh, so that I could control a process that I wanted to add. That's one of the beauties of Augie is that you can just add a panel somewhere uh, and now you have a new capability. We've found some pretty good uh, experiences with this 3D module. Uh, I've turned out a couple things that I'll drop on as photographs at the end of this video uh, so that you can get an idea of the type of work you can do. But it's really young. I've only uh, shot maybe 10 or 15 tests. I've used acrylic and wood and they both seem to respond quite well. I don't recommend grainy woods however. Um, the grainier the wood the rougher your surface will tend to be. Uh, woods like poplar and pine I'm finding uh, work quite well. So here we are at the end of this image. You can see it took 2 minutes and 39 seconds. It then returns, and our Z is now at uh, minus 0.2. So my table has moved up to bring my focus uh, down into the material. You can click on the image at any time, by the way, to uh, clear the blue line that shows you what you've already done. Um, now you want to keep your eye on what Z, Z level you're at. If I was to press run now, it'll uh, continue to run, and then on, when it finishes, it'll go to minus 0.4. If you're doing a great number of passes, you may want to, in between, uh, b before pressing run, you may want to go over and approximately measure the actual depth of, for example, this black spot. Because if this is telling you you're at minus 0.4 because it's been scanning uh, with the assumption of 0.2 per pass, you might be taking 0.26 or something. So at any point, you could correct that just by entering a new depth in the current scan or in the current depth. That means on the next press, on the next time it finishes a scan, it will um, assume it was there and it increment upwards, uh, taking your focus back into focus. I find it doesn't matter if a pass or two is out of focus uh, because I'm only moving up a slight amount. Uh, so you can correct it by playing with these numbers during a run or after a run. Uh, and then you would simply hit run again. Uh, in order to continue to pass. You can see we now know it's on pass number two, so it's taking the appropriate steps to skip these bright areas and not burn them again. And because of that, you get a pretty good 3D representation. All right, I'll stop that now. I'll show a video, or I'll show a photo at the end of this video so you can get an idea of what it does. I want to show you two other things that are in the program, uh, which will be added to over the summer. Under the main menu, you'll find now there is a universal programmer's guide and if you press it, a help file will open up. Um, this help file uh, will grow over the summer and I'll fill it with more things, uh, but it lists the commands and what the commands belong to. So you can go into the engine module, for example, and see examples of how to use the commands and what they will return. Now a great deal of this file uh, is still hooks that I've put in there for myself. They show the command, they show what it belongs to and what you can do for it. Um, on many of them you can guess what the parameters are, but I will be providing examples for all of them uh, and adding a great many examples and uh, explanations of how things in the program work over time. So this will be your main help file uh, if you decide to play within the uh, scripting system or even to run the program. Uh, the last thing I'll show you is the uh, contours library. Up here on the screen you can see there's a button called cons. This is our uh, 2.5D contours library. Uh, next year a button will appear beside it, cons 3D for loading STLs and doing 3D work. Uh, the cons, when you press it, will bring up a console that deals with contours. Um, it's, it remembers any sizing that you put into it, so when you first use it, drag it to a good size. I like mine taking up most of the screen, because this is not a module that you're going to use at the same time as, um, as you use Augie in a runtime situation. Uh, this is meant for uh, importing DXFs, exporting DXFs, and saving them to files and so on. Uh, it is only roughed in and it only has a very small uh, list of abilities at the moment, uh, but it will be uh, increasing in power. Uh, and by fall, uh, this, toolbar, this toolbar will be starting to fill um, with things that we can use.
when it loads a DXF file, it optimizes it because it assumes that this is going to be something that you're going to use for machining. So because of that, it will uh, put things in order and uh, create profiles and chains. Uh, let's take a look at a different one, actually. Uh, this is a horrible file. It operates on the, um, on the theory of layers. Uh, so almost any file you load will be a layer and it may in fact encompass several layers. Uh, in this case the program sensed that this was all on one layer so it loaded it as a layer. And up here in the tree you'll see that you can open it up and take a look at any of the entities that are within the file. And they'll all typically represent a chained together group of uh, DXF commands or drawing commands that uh, complete an enclosed space. Uh, when you have a file open you can select areas of the file with your uh, mouse just dragging it over. Uh, the boxes on the screen will allow you to modify your DXF to move things around. Uh, you can stretch them, move them to different sizes, or move them around to the screen, and you, then you can resave it as a DXF. Uh, soon, as I say, more toolbar menu items will show up to give you more detailed ways to scale these and change them. Uh, you can rotate them with this center rotational dot. And if you right click, you'll see you leave a rotational reference and if you then rotate you're rotating around that center. Uh, you can then uh, save this as a DXF and uh, use it in another program or use it for whatever you were looking for with a uh, erotic in the end. Another thing you can do with it is um, let me just delete that I'm going to go close this. This dialog never really closes. If I was to hit the button it'll very very quickly open up because it's a sy system dialog which is always available to us in Augie because in the end you're going to do a lot of work there uh, when doing artistic uh, work from the program. Um, I'm going to load a G-code file here. Uh, I think I have Roadrunner on this program. Alright, I've loaded the Roadrunner program which is pretty ubiquitous from Mach 3. I think everybody's familiar with it. There's three Roadrunners and uh, they've always bothered me because they're at a scale for me typically. I use metric and they're in inches. Uh, and that's another function of the cons module. If I open it up, I can select import G-code. And whatever I have loaded as G-code is then imported into the system. Uh, if I select that layer as a layer, I can then, uh, for example, uh, if I select the layer, I can then for example, just select a single Roadrunner, move them out of the way, um, select the main Roadrunner, so I can flip things around to reformat that G-code program. I could then select the entire thing and scale it up to a value where I would want to cut it uh, on a non-imperial uh, system, for example. So this just gives you an idea of the types of things. The next button to appear on the toolbar will be export this back to G-code so that you have, in essence, loaded a G-code, changed it, and then reset it out as another type of G-code. Um, we'll be talking on the forum in future about which tools that we would like to have up here what kinds of operations you'd like to be able to apply to both your G-code files as well as your DXF files. So you might want to give some thought to that uh, if you do play with this section of the program. Uh, don't expect a lot of functionality from it at the moment. It's just a hook to show uh, where we're going with it. All right, that's it. That's uh, how laser 3D machining works. And that's the state of the program as we leave it uh, as we enter into the summer of 2016. Thanks a lot.